The Grand Canyon is a landscape of irresistible vistas. Officials say it's where a tourist traveling from Hong Kong died after falling a thousand feet while using a selfie stick. It happened close to, but not on, the rail protected skywalk. In the heart of Arizona, the Grand Canyon astounds everyone who has an opportunity to witness its unparalleled beauty sculpted by nature's artistic hand. Its towering brown cliffs and the vibrant hues of its falls draw visitors from around the globe to glimpse the awe-inspiring phenomenon. However, what scientists just discovered beneath its surface beauty astonishes the world. Join us as we embark on a journey through time and geological wonder. Stay tuned as we reveal the astonishing details that unveil the Grand Canyon's secrets, challenging our perceptions of Earth's history. Number 15. The Curse of the Grand Canyon What could be the cause of this strange occurrence? The Grand Canyon Park Rangers have reported a fascinating occurrence involving visitors returning stolen items to the park. According to several rangers, people occasionally mail letters or packages containing items they had taken from the canyon, believing them to be cursed. The individuals take these items home as souvenirs, but then experience bad luck. In response, they go to the extent of returning the allegedly jinxed objects by mail. While the idea of cursed items might be subjective, it's important to note that removing any natural objects from the Grand Canyon National Park is against the law irrespective of their perceived supernatural qualities. Number 14. An underground Egyptian city. How can an Egyptian civilization possibly be lost in the crevices of the Grand Canyon? You'd wonder how much of a continental drift could make that possible. The intriguing tale began in 1909, when an explorer named G. E. Kincaid stumbled upon some caverns during an expedition led by Smithsonian anthropologist S. A. Jordan. Despite the inaccessible entrance, Kincaid penetrated the cavern and made a remarkable discovery. The caves were wide enough to house 50,000 people and radiated from a central cavern-like spokes on a wheel. They housed many artifacts, including statues, copper weapons, and granaries stocked with seeds. What added an extra layer of mystery was that the unearthed artifacts didn't align with anything recorded in the known historical record. Instead of bearing Native American origins, as one might anticipate, the objects displayed distinctive Egyptian designs. This raises the question, could there have been an entire civilization of Egyptians in that location? And if so, how did they find their way there? The events that followed were the largest anticlimax in the history of anticlimaxes, as the Smithsonian denied any records of the individuals or the artifacts in North or South America, and several attempts to locate the caverns failed, casting doubt on the story's authenticity. But still, the story had gained lots of traction, and many theories were spun. Some resolved that the story was a hoax perpetrated by the Gazette so they could sell papers. Some proposed that it was a Smithsonian cover-up, as the government wanted to keep the location a secret as they did with other covert areas like Area 51. The mystery persists, fueling various speculations and conspiracy theories. Number 13. The Rocky Serpents, the Grand Canyon Rattlesnake, a subspecies of the widespread western rattlesnake, also known as Crotalus oreganus, camouflages among the diverse rock layers of the Grand Canyon. This venomous pit viper employs its rattles, which can vibrate up to 50 times per second, among the fastest muscle contractions documented in science, to caution potential predators. The vicinity of the Grand Canyon hosts nine rattlesnake species, including two subspecies of the western rattlesnake within the park. Grand Canyon National Park encompasses five species, Grand Canyon and Great Basin subspecies of the western rattlesnake, speckled rattlesnake, black-tailed rattlesnake, and prairie rattlesnake. Additionally, four species, including the Grand Canyon subspecies of the western rattlesnake, have been documented below the canyon rim. Rattlesnakes play crucial roles in ecosystems as both predators and prey. Typically harmless when undisturbed, however, they resort to striking in self-defense. When next you visit the Grand Canyon, heightened awareness is advised. One can hardly notice these venomous predators from a distance, as their camouflage can make them blend seamlessly with the rock colors, making them inconspicuous. Number 12. The Shape-Shifting Power of the Grand Canyon 
The Grand Canyon owes its magnificent formation to the meandering of the Colorado River, a geological artist shaping the landscape over centuries. Although the changes may seem unnoticeable to the naked eye, the river and the forces of wind, rain, and other environmental elements continue to sculpt and redefine the Grand Canyon. This ongoing process ensures that what future generations witness is a dynamic and ever-evolving masterpiece of nature. Geologists estimate that the Grand Canyon is eroded at one foot every 200 years. The Colorado Plateau, the geologic area where the Grand Canyon is located, is very stable. Geologists expect the Grand Canyon to deepen as long as the Colorado River flows. The vast expanse of the Grand Canyon contributes to its ecological diversity, offering visitors the unique experience of witnessing completely different ecosystems coexisting within its confines. Number 11. The Dread of the Red Rocks Despite the Grand Canyon being home to larger and traditionally more dangerous animals such as mountain lions and black bears, an unexpected culprit has earned the title of the most dangerous, the Rock Squirrel, as revealed by ER visits. Park rangers at the Grand Canyon describe these seemingly harmless creatures as unforgiving and absolutely ferocious, urging visitors to be cautious about their behavior. Characterized by their spotted gray fur and measuring 17 to 21 inches, rock squirrels are large ground squirrels with distinctive long bushy tails adorned with white edges. Thriving in rocky habitats, they can be spotted on canyon walls, cliffs, slopes, and rock piles, and are known for burrowing beneath rocks to create dens. These creatures, active during the daytime when human traffic is high, live in colonies and exhibit teamwork. There have been instances where rock squirrels lure and attack unsuspecting tourists. To mitigate the risk of such encounters, tourists are strongly advised to avoid close contact with any type of squirrel during their visit to the Grand Canyon. While most squirrels are not aggressive, rock squirrels pose a unique threat, leading to annual incidents that land tourists in the emergency room due to their unexpected and ferocious attacks. Number 10. The terrifying creation of the Grand Canyon Teddy Roosevelt once deemed the Grand Canyon a must-see for every American, a sentiment echoed by Congress 100 years ago when, on February 26, 1919, they officially designated it as a national park in Arizona. The extensive history of the 277-mile-long canyon extends far beyond its official designation. The Grand Canyon's origin unfolds with the creation of various rock layers spanning approximately two billion years. It all started with the formation of igneous and metamorphic rocks, followed by the gradual deposition of sedimentary layers atop these foundational rocks. The rocks were shaped by the gradual erosion caused by the Colorado River. The Colorado River has been in rock carving for five to six million years, a geological process termed downcutting. This phenomenon involves the river sculpting canyons or valleys by cutting into the earth and eroding rock over time. Downcutting occurs during floods when a river channel transports substantial water, carrying large rocks and boulders. These rocks, acting as chisels, chip away at the riverbed as they bounce. The Grand Canyon experiences heightened downcutting due to the Colorado River's steep slope, substantial volume, and arid climate. Over time, the river carved through the land, giving rise to the awe-inspiring depths of the canyon as we recognize it today. This phenomenon illustrates that enduring weathering and erosion across an extended time frame can profoundly shape the Earth. While the Colorado River's transformative work spanned millions of years, this is relatively rapid when contrasted with the billions of years of deposition unveiled by the canyon. Descending into the Grand Canyon is essentially a journey back in time, documented in the layers of rocks. Number 9. Havasupai Tribe the Havasupai are called the people of the blue-green water. The Havasupai people reside mainly in Supai, a canyon connected to the Grand Canyon. However, in the past, their range extended from Bill Williams Mountain in the south to the Little Colorado River in the east. They would migrate vertically within the Grand Canyon, adapting to different layers based on seasonal changes. In autumn and winter, the Havasupai resided on the Colorado Plateau, engaged in hunting and gathering for sustenance. When spring and summer arrived, these families cultivated the Tonto platform, including the Indian Garden and other fertile regions, cultivating crops such as corn, beans, squash, melons, and pumpkins. 
European explorers only contacted the Havasupai when Spanish priest Francisco Garces journeyed to Havasu Canyon in 1776. Subsequently, Garces ventured east to the Hopi Mesas, where his account revealed the existence of another Havasupai village extending as far east as Moenkopi Wash, surpassing the Grand Canyon. For many years, the Havasupai people were confined to a 518-acre reservation in Havasu Canyon, a fraction of their ancestral lands. In 1975, Congress restored 185,000 acres of canyon and rim territory to the Havasupai tribe. Between establishing the modest Havasupai Reservation in 1882 and its expansion in 1975, the Havasupai adapted their lifestyle, increasingly relying on farming, wage labor, and tourism for sustenance. Their isolated homeland provides a unique journey into the past, where natural rhythms guide daily life and mules continue to carry the mail. Number 8. Grand Canyon Caves with Sloth Dung Millions of tourists capturing selfies at the edge of the Grand Canyon are oblivious that the reddish limestone cliffs are dotted with caves. These inaccessible crevices have served as ideal habitats for wood rats, bats, birds, and once existent mountain goats and sloths for millennia. Ranging in size, some caves are so constricted that entry requires crawling. In contrast, others offer spacious interiors, allowing one to turn without touching the walls. The extremely arid conditions establish a perfect setting for preservation, enabling researchers to glimpse more than 40,000 years into the past and understand a world that thrived during an era when a substantial portion of North America was veiled under a dense ice sheet. In a recent Grand Canyon expedition, researchers explored Rampart Cave at the far western end. They discovered hundreds of dung balls on the floor, seemingly fresh at first glance. However, these droppings belonged to the extinct 500-pound Shasta ground sloth, dating back over 10,000 years to the 1930s. Decades later, revisiting the cave, the interior resembled a barnyard accompanied by a more subdued aroma as described by Mead. The site also houses numerous mummified bats, peacefully nestled among ancient gypsum crystals, their final resting place seemingly undisturbed despite the passage of millennia. Number 7. Uranium deposits found in the Grand Canyon. High levels of uranium ore are found in the public lands surrounding Grand Canyon National Park. Uranium deposits are located deep within sandstone, siltstone, and mudstone layers in the southwest. In the Grand Canyon region, these deposits are found within geologic features known as breccia pipes. The commencement of uranium mining near Grand Canyon National Park dates back to the 1950s with Orphan Mine situated merely two miles from Grand Canyon Village. In the mid-2000s, uranium prices surged, prompting companies in the Grand Canyon area to pursue mining opportunities for its limited high-grade ore. By the decade's end, numerous mining claims dotted the public lands surrounding Grand Canyon National Park. Approximately eight uranium mines, including the currently operational Canyon Mine, which was recently renamed Pinyon Plain Mine, threaten springs within the Grand Canyon vicinity. Uranium mining operations being financially unpredictable are frequently deserted for extended periods. During these periods, there is a lack of supervision and ongoing maintenance, leaving drilling sites, tailing piles, and mines exposed to natural elements. This abandonment can result in groundwater contamination, airborne uranium pollution, and dust dispersion, posing safety hazards for recreational visitors on public lands. The Grand Canyon holds spiritual and cultural significance for 11 Native American tribes like the Havasupai. These villages rely on a spring-fed creek for essential activities in their daily lives. Concerned about potential water contamination from Canyon Mine, they've steadfastly opposed uranium mining in the Grand Canyon vicinity since the 1980s, aiming to protect their vital water sources and preserve their cultural practices. Number 6. The Case of Disappearing and Appearing Bodies Recently, National Park Service personnel recovered a body believed to be that of a man who went missing after entering Grand Canyon National Park on July 19, 2021. The retrieval followed a multi-day search and rescue operation. The quest for him commenced on August 9th when his vehicle was discovered parked at the visitor center. Las Vegas police's welfare check call spurred rangers to initiate the search for the Hungarian national, as his family had reported him missing following his stay there. 
The discovered body, identified as likely belonging to 45-year-old Gabor Bertsi Tomksanyi, was located beneath Yavapai Point in the park, approximately 430 feet below the rim. More surprising than discovering the buried body is stumbling upon an additional corpse previously unknown and never reported missing. While searching for Gabor Bertsi Tomsanyi at Grand Canyon National Park, the search and rescue team uncovered human remains belonging to another individual named Walsh. Baird mentioned that Walsh's attire seamlessly merged with the surroundings, yet he was discovered 600 feet beneath the Pipe Creek Overlook while aerially searching for Bertsi Tomsanyi. Baird stated, We weren't actively searching for him, and he wasn't a person prominently on our radar. According to Baird, Walsh wasn't formally reported missing to the park. Still, they presume it's him based on a driver's license discovered in his jacket, matching the name on prescription bottles found in a day pack at the park years ago, as per the New York Daily News. Number 5. Grand Canyon Luxury Suite Typically, describing a hotel room as cavernous isn't the most enthusiastic praise. Hospitality experts often prefer terms like cozy or luxurious. However, when it comes to the Grand Canyon luxury suite, calling it cavernous is not just a compliment, but an accurate description. Situated 200 feet beneath the surface within the Grand Canyon caverns in Peach Springs, these accommodations proudly boast the world's oldest, darkest, deepest, quietest, and largest suite room. In 1927, a woodcutter named Walter Peck stumbled upon dry caverns near the Grand Canyon. Hoping to find gold in the walls of the caverns, he bought the place but found no gold. He eventually turned it into a tourist attraction. Over the years, it changed owners and names, now belonging to a group of friends since 2001. Situated along the historic Route 66, the caverns include RV Park, a restaurant, and a frisbee golf course. Above the cavern, dinosaur statues add a unique touch to the ground. Conceived by the current proprietors, the spellbinding cavern suite materialized in 2010, a four-month creative venture. Descending 22 stories via elevator, guests are welcomed into a colossal cavern stretching 220 by 400 feet, crowned by a soaring 70-foot ceiling. Nestled in a cavern nook, the room defies convention, framed only by a quaint wooden fence evoking the ambiance of a clandestine chamber. A visual marvel indeed. Number 4. The Mogollon Monster When one envisions Bigfoot, the Pacific Northwest typically comes to mind rather than Arizona. So it wasn't surprising when Chris Shaver, a Valley 101 listener who resided in Oregon before moving to Arizona, inquired about the existence of Sasquatch or other mythical creatures in the valley. Surprisingly, Arizona has recorded sightings of a Sasquatch-like creature dating back to 1903 near the Grand Canyon, as reported in the Arizona Republican. For a moment, imagine yourself navigating the desolate roads surrounding the Grand Canyon at night or trekking its meandering trails as the sun sets. The quiet is interrupted by the rustling of leaves and a faint shadow subtly moves in the distance. Feels unsettling, right? Residents and tourists have claimed sightings of a massive, hairy, and ferocious creature traversing the terrain. Occasionally, it emits a spine-chilling scream, unlike any human sound. This mysterious being known as the Mogollon Monster has been described in numerous testimonies. The Mogollon Monster is portrayed as either sizable or human in stature, with eyes that range from green to red and covered in fur of white, gray, or black-brown hues. Its mysterious origins puzzle observers, yet there's a shared belief among visitors, residents, and researchers that something not entirely human may be roaming the Ponderosa Pines of northern Arizona. Number 3 the Grand Canyon's Skywalk. Why imagine walking on the clouds when you can do that amidst the rocky landscape of the Grand Canyon? The Grand Canyon Skywalk is a spectacular 4,000-foot glass cantilever bridge extending 70 feet beyond the Grand Canyon's west rim. Conveniently accessible from Las Vegas, either by a two-half-hour road trip or a swift 45-minute flight, it treats visitors to breathtaking views of Lake Mead and Hoover Dam. Remarkably sturdy, the structure is engineered to endure extreme conditions, capable of supporting the weight of 71 fully loaded 747 passenger planes and withstand a magnitude 8 earthquake. Construction on the Skywalk commenced on October 6, 2004, 
following the Hualapai blessing. After a month of drilling, the process spanned 18 months. Subsequently, it took an extra four months to weld 40-foot beams transported to the Arizona site. Employing a method reminiscent of the ancient Egyptians, the skywalk was assembled at the rim and moved into place. Specially designed manipulators lifted the 80,000 pounds glass floor panels, each capable of holding up to 800 people. In total, 46 glass panels are forming the transparent floor. The introduction of Skywalk provided a unique and valuable economic boost to the tribe, complementing the existing attractions such as zip lining, gift shops, restaurants, whitewater river rafting on the Colorado River, and helicopter tours. Number two, Bighorn Sheep in Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon is home to the elusive and majestic Bighorn Sheep. Amidst the towering cliffs and rocky landscapes, these resilient creatures navigate the juts of the canyon with such skill and grace that isn't expected of a four-legged hoofed animal. The arrival of European settlers in the 16th century marked a significant decline in desert bighorn sheep populations across the American Southwest. Following this, conservation measures led to a stabilization of numbers, though still below historical figures. Despite the challenges since 1960, conservation efforts have contributed to an overall increase in the desert bighorn sheep population. Thriving within the depths of a profound canyon, they find sustenance from the plentiful water flowing from the Colorado River. Despite the absence of grazing within the Grand Canyon, the bighorn sheep face threats from within and outside the park. Historically, domestic sheep and goat grazing along the park boundaries have introduced non-native diseases, posing a risk to the bighorn sheep populations. Furthermore, alterations in Colorado River flows due to the Glen Canyon Dam impose restrictions on bighorn sheep movements across the river. On a broader scale, climate warming and drying can modify habitat quality and forage availability, influencing the dynamics of bighorn sheep within the canyon. Despite these challenges, the bighorn sheep population in the Grand Canyon maintains a resilient status underscoring the vital role of national parks as crucial refuges for regional desert bighorn sheep populations. Number 1. Havasu Falls In a side canyon of the Grand Canyon on the Havasupai Indian Reservation, the Havasupai Falls Ensemble comprises Navajo Falls, 50-Foot Falls, Havasu Falls, Mooney Falls, and Beaver Falls. The Grand Canyon's waterfalls, distinguished from all others worldwide, provide an extraordinary chance to witness nature's marvels making every visit worthwhile. Havasu Falls stands out among the renowned Aqua Blue Havasupai waterfalls, cascading over vibrant cliffs within a desert oasis of breathtaking beauty. The striking contrast between the dry, arid expanse of Havasu Canyon and the lush greenery surrounding the water creates a compelling blend of harsh desert and a lush tropical paradise. Over the past century, Havasu Falls has undergone significant transformations. A hundred years back, the falls looked entirely different from the familiar single spout we see today. A 200 feet, 61 m water curtain cascaded down the cliff. The latest alteration occurred in the aftermath of the 2008 flood, as a section of the existing veil broke away. This event led to the current state of water flowing exclusively from one side of the notch. Have you ever pondered the mystical origin of Havasu Falls' enchanting turquoise color? The blue waters are the physical exhibition of the dissolved calcium carbonate and magnesium blend, naturally occurring on Havasu Creek. The Havasupai tribe, custodians of the reservation, share a profound bond with the water and the land. It is believed that the water doesn't just flow over the land, but courses through every tribe member. We have come to the end of this video. Which of these features of the Grand Canyon do you find most astounding? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.